New York, it's Ask an Engineers. <laughs> hey, everybody. <laughs> bump you over a little Wait, bit. Wait, don't know about me. I'm yeah. an engineer. Yeah. Welcome to uh, Ask an Engineer. This is our, our last show on Saturday nights. It's very exciting. Uh, we've been doing this show on Saturday for four years. As always, I'm Lady Ada. I'm the engineer. We also have Mike Esty. Who's like, you know, a software and hardware engineer also. So the CTO. Counts, counts yeah, I'm, I'm going to be out of the picture for some of this. The CTO and co-founder of... Other Machine Co. Yeah, well, yeah we'll we're going to talk, talk about that. And also, of course, Mr. Lady Ada, who yeah. is on yeah, video I'm just control. Be a little pan off to the and side explain side. to people why this site is down. Oh, yeah. right. Let me do some things here. So, our site's getting upgraded right now. So, Which is awesome. So, you're going to have a discount code, but you're not going to be able to use it till later. So, our site will probably come up during the show or a little bit after. So, can we use a code tomorrow? Can you use a code? We're so extending it. We've extended the code all the way to Sunday night wow. at 1159 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Wow. All right. Super bonus. And also, we'll be broadcasting on Wednesday. Yeah. All sorts of exciting stuff today on Ask an Engineer. Okay. Do you want me to go through this? Yeah, I do this thing. All right. On the show, the code is other mill. 10% off. So our site's back up. <laughs> Everything's in stock in the Adafruit store except for Eagle CAD software because that's software. We can't do that. A quick reminder, the show is moving to 7.30, or that's show and tell, Eastern Standard Time on Wednesdays, and Ask an Engineer on Wednesday nights at 8 p.m. We're doing that. We'll talk about our new free deal on the site, talk about Bitcoins because we're accepting them. We got a show and tell that we're going to uh, go over. We had a full packed house. We're going to talk to Mike SD, CTO and co-founder of Other, uh, Other Machine Co., which makes the Other Mill. A lot of people out there in Adafruit land may know a little bit about this cool and wonderful machine. We're going to have a live demo and talk about all this stuff, what it's like to run a Kickstarter and more. We're going to uh, talk about like one new product. <laughs> we're going to answer your questions. We have a trivia question. All that and more on Ask an Engineer. All right. Okay. All right, so this thing. Yeah, so I'm gonna. Um, I'm gonna Get out of here. Yeah, I want you Get to. Get out of here. Or stay here. What? I'm gonna I'm gonna move the camera in a bit. But, okay. Um, just real quick. Um, the code is other mill when this uh, site's back up. That's ten percent off everything in stock. Uh, that's gonna be active until eleven fifty nine p.m. on Sunday. Um, Hopefully, I'm, we'll be up by tomorrow. <laughs> Yeah, that would be that. They said um, 15 minutes. Okay. Yeah, we'll be, one back, other, soon. We'll be one back, other, back soon. One other quick thing. We have a new um, free deal for the month of February. So if you order $99 worth of stuff on Adafruit, you get a Permapro to half size breadboard. And $200, you get a free UPS ground. We want to mix it up because we figure people order at least yeah. once a month. They probably have a roller by now. Yeah. So you something different. So we're going to give away a half size Permaproto. Very handy for all yeah. your prototyping needs. So you can measure your prototype with the ruler and then build it on the front proto, and then maybe we'll do something else for the next yeah. giveaway. And uh, we're still taking Bitcoin because they still exist in some way. <laughs> this is weird. Uh, um, I guess we could talk about this later. Like you did Kickstarter when mm -hmm. you guys are selling to the public. Do you think you're going to take Bitcoin? Oh man, I have no idea. Yeah, well, I, don't I, I might take Doggy Coin. Okay, see that's the thing, right? Like I'm already, <laughs> yeah, I'm already yeah. on to the next so one. So end mail. Yeah. Okay. okay. So Lady Ada, I want you to. Go over the show and tell. We had a pack show and tell. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna go show and tell. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. First up, we had uh, Tony show up. He's been doing a lot of stuff with the CC3000, uh, especially the modules that we sell in the store. And today he was working on ultra low power Wi-Fi. So he, you know, doing stuff to try to get the quiescent current under a milliamp so he can run an Arduino compatible and a CC3000 off of a couple AA batteries for two months with logging every 10 minutes, like updating data every 10 minutes over Wi-Fi, which is pretty good. And you know, if you put like a rechargeable battery in a small solar cell, you could probably just get enough power from lighting. Forever. Forever. Until the sun burns out. Well, no, even, the, even indoors, <laughs> like you can usually get like two or three milliamps. Yeah, so even of, after the sun burns out. Even after the sun burns out. Mm -hmm. um, so you're good to go. Hopefully Wi-Fi will be around then. 
Uh, Joshua showed up and he made his own Minty Boost, except instead of the LT1302, he used the LT1308, which is a surface mount part, which is why we don't use it. It's really great. Linear Technologies Boost Converter can take like three volts and bring it up to five volts at one amp. Wow, one whole amp. That's so much amp. Um, and his fits into a large Mint 10, and it's very cute looking, and he had a nice circuit board. Um, next up, Roger came by and he made an Arduino with an LCD Shield Blackjack um, program, which was super cute. And uh, we played blackjack and we lost $50 and then I won $55. So I'm ahead somehow. Um, really cool program. He's going to maybe post it up on GitHub. We'll get the code. Check the, uh, the show and tell for uh, that GitHub link. Uh, Andrew came by and he had made an RC car that is controlled uh, over Wi-Fi. And he made a little like web page for it thingy. And uh, it works really well. He doesn't have a camera though. So you're kind of flying blind. But theoretically, we could control his RC car from here, which we will do later, somehow. Uh, Tony, uh, 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 who's another, another Tony, not Tony DeCola, Tony Sherwood, <laughs> two Tonys. Uh, this Tony actually is uh, our lead web dev here at Adafruit. And he's been building a really cool MAME arcade. And this uses an Arduino Leonardo as the uh, keyboard, um, joystick to keyboard adapter. and so. He's done all sorts of cool hacks, such as uh, making it so you can play four-player uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles on a two-player um, arcade control. Uh, he has six buttons, the start button. He's going to have a, a coin box so um, that his kid will have to uh, insert quarters in order to play a game, which is a good way to save money and also play uh, four-player Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Um, and to get your allowance back. And you can get, you, well, I think he's going to save it. But anyways, OK. Uh, Richard, or I said the kid could also just hack the Arduino to like get free credits, like with like the Slip coin on the it. on the wire thing. I mean, like that's I think that's worth it. I think if you hack it, like you learn how to program Arduino, okay, you get to play free games now. Um, Richard came by with an adorable little acrylic cut trinket bot that uses a trinket and a little sonar module and two continuous rotation servos, and it has a little little avoidance algorithm, so it just you know, if it hits a wall or he's going to hit a wall, it'll turn around. Very cute. Rick has upgraded his 3D printed robot, uh, which is extremely boring with just feet, and now it has <laughs> movable feet. The feet moves, the robot comes for you, and it's very cute. And if it had lasers, I would probably let it laser me because it's just so cute. Um, hopefully, he'll put up those files on Thingiverse. He usually does, so check out Thingiverse for that. And then finally, Roberto is back with his uh, lizard. Home. Planimals. And he made some planimals, which are uh, servo controlled plants that look like animals that are controlled with a PIR sensor. So I guess the lizards will be excited or scared. We don't know yet. I think it's going to replace cats on the internet. And then there were, we also had like eight cats. Everyone like was shown off their cats. So it was like <laughs> a cat party. Um, <laughs> creepy. Cats, cats or robots. Either people yeah. had a cat or they had a robot. And they would just hold up either the robot or the cat. So, I don't know. Nobody had dogs. Have we seen a dog? You know, we're just, we're just a cat company. We're just a cat company. <laughs> just, right. just, just cats little, and robots. It's just what happened. There's dog companies or cat companies. Cat Robo cats. Companies. Yeah. Okay, great. That's right. it. Wait, Ada, how do people get on the show and tell? Getting on the show and tell is awesome. Go to our Google Plus page at plus.google.com and find the link where I say, hey, comment here to get added to the show and tell circle, and then comment there, and we'll add you. And then every week on Wednesday, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time, not Saturday, because we're moving Show and Tell and Ask Engineer yeah. to Wednesdays at 7.30 p.m. So don't come here Saturday. We won't be here next week. Not going to be here. I'm going to be asleep. Yeah. Uh, thank God. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> uh, do that, and uh, we will add you, and you'll get invited. And then on Wednesday at 7.30 p.m., you get to show off your cool projects. All right. I'm going to do my little... That was weird. I could do it off to the side now. Okay, all right. Next up. This is the fastest yeah. paper airplane in yeah. six parsecs. We have this nice graphic as a reminder of all the stuff. That hey, by the way. Stuff. Yeah, let's move in those times. 7.30 p.m. Okay, so. All right, enough of this jibber jabber. Yeah, our special guest tonight is, I guess, the CTO. Nice selfie. Yeah, CTO and co-founder of Other Machine Co. A lot of people know Mike and his work from the Kickstarter, a very successful Kickstarter. So Mike. Tell us, okay. about, tell us about yourself. Hey, how's it going? Hey! Um, I'm Mike Esty. Uh, I make robots that uh, cut oh, yeah. things. 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's just us two. Good times. Okay. Um, I make robots for people uh, to do stuff with. Um, okay. And we br I brought one here today. Actually, this is like the, this is the first uh, machine to leave the other mill factory. Can, well, you can just point. Yeah. You can just point at the. I yeah. Actually, yeah. I actually have. Um, oh, I, yeah, can, yeah. I can go to the. Um, Everything. No, you, it's okay. No, it's okay. Dun, dun, dun. It, it's in theory, it auto focuses ish. Yeah. In theory. So yeah, so this is your little other mill, which is Ooh. which looks a little bit like you know like the a Mac Classic, but with like a cutting bit in the middle. It has little hands. Oh okay. It's little wrenches. Hey. I like that you put magnets there because I can hold the tools. That's a nice. Magnets touch. make everything better. This yeah. is a. This is true. This is true facts. True facts. I'm not sure how they work, but they do make everything better. <laughs> okay, and actually we're doing some milling. So there's there's an X. So the, the table moves in the y direction, and then the head moves in the x direct direction, and then there's also like a z for yeah, the so it's mill. Yeah, so it's a three-axis milling machine um, with a uh, one thousandth of an inch uh, resolution, um, which is uh, not a very lot of. It's a very small amount of inch, uh, so you can build really detailed things. Oh, can we go maybe see the the, the photo of the, yeah. the double? Because it because it's gonna, I want to see people. I want people to. Do we this. have lots of photos. We have no, um, no, the this, the, way? Um, this double Which one. one. Remember this one? Yeah, because that way you can sort of see the the body, so that you can see that it's like this. It's about this big. So that, that's our that's our prototype. That okay, was, but uh, it's you know similar. Designed by, by by Jonathan Ward. Um, and it's a, it's it's a little bit smaller than the one that we're shipping. So the one that we're we're shipping is a, is larger by an inch in every dimension. Um, well, this yeah, there yeah, you go. That's, that's, a good that's, that's the prototype. This is prototype. That's still the prototype. Yep. That's okay. Yeah. That's, it's very similar. This one is, has a snap together technique, but that's not sustainable for a large scale manufacturer. It's, it's great if you if you're in college and you can't afford screws. Okay, but you guys can afford screws. Yeah. Big time. Yes. So you, you it's screwed together now, which also makes it a little bit more. We sweet. bought the screws in volume and passed the savings on to you. <laughs> um, I want to go back. Um, I'll just be a, a headless. Voice across the okay. <laughs> thing, yeah. but I want to talk about the Kickstarter. So um, your goal was fifty thousand dollars, and you got three hundred thousand. Yes. So this is a, that was a successful Kickstarter. I, I think that's what they yeah that's what they call them. Um, yeah. I, yeah I, I, uh, <laughs> what's so it like? What's it like running a Kickstarter? It's really terrifying. Yeah. Um, because is it, success, a, is it the scariest because, thing? Because done? of success or because of failure? Or because of both? No. The terrifying part is when your friends uh, are Kickstarter backers. I'm a backer. And then, <laughs> and then you can't run away to the Bahamas with the money. <laughs> You're like, man, all my friends got one. I have so. your cell phone number. <laughs> I know where you live. <laughs> I, think, I, I think I said. Because you said you're going to be in New York, I'm like, that's great. Where's my other mill? <laughs> <laughs> I think I said you have to bring it. Up. You have to bring it. Yeah, oh. that's that's how this one left the factory. Is is Phil harassed me into bringing it. Um, yeah. Yeah. No, it's it was it was really interesting. We uh, so I saw that, like when I first saw the machine that Jonathan had designed, I was like, wow, that's really amazing. Like I want one, and I know 50, 50 other people that really want one. Um, and so we just ran the experiment on Kickstarter to see what happened, and and the first fifty went out in the first twenty four hours. Uh, I'm backer. And, and uh, yeah, from from there we got uh, 200 and change backers, um, mm -hmm. who are our biggest fans, and we're working our butts off to get them out the door as fast as possible. So, so they, w they went for the, the backers had to donate like a thousand to to fifteen hundred dollars or something. Yeah, it's, it was about that range. Which is yeah. a, which is a good deal because it's like it's you know, that's like a really nice mill with that kind of precision. How much would it normally cost to get something like that? Um, it's going to be in the vicinity of a. Of about two thousand, yeah. when all is said and done, um, is there anything like this that's like that's similar that people can compare to? Like, I mean, it's it's not a maker bot. Most people are familiar with maker yeah, bots. Maker bots deposit. Yeah, and this we removes. get that. We get that asked all the time. People Look, are like, and wow. and I know, but they yeah. don't know. So yeah, it's like, is, the, is that a, is that a three D printer and and the. You know, it's an milling is, printer, actually. Yeah, milling, milling has been around forever, but we've we've had to use the oh, it's like a three D printer, but it takes material away instead of adding it. Yeah. And the awesome thing about that is is that you can um, uh, you can make stuff out of uh, a lot more materials than you can with a three D printer. So like you don't a, have to inject it through a little hole. Well, so you yeah, can... yeah. It it doesn't have to be ABS or PLA or whatever the the new flexible materials are. So we can cut uh, metal, we can cut um, wax, we can cut wood, uh, like laminates, chocolate. Um, More chocolate. Lots of chocolate. Chocolate's chocolate. actually not the best milling material. Like you milk chocolate really? I have, yeah. Okay. It was really tasty. No, not milk chocolate. Milk chocolate. Oh, milk chocolate. No, milk chocolate doesn't have doesn't produce good chips. You want oh, you, you want, want like a really chocolate? hard dark chocolate okay. is like the best milling chocolate. Okay, great. True facts. True facts. Um, and then there's just some wax, so you can make a mold. Yeah, you can build molds. And so this is like an attractive couple walking down the street with another mill. 
Yeah, so that's Martine, and they're, they're not a couple, but that's, that's Martine and that's Forrest. <laughs> so Forrest writes our motion planner, and uh, Martine manages our, our community. And they're totally just going to take this to Dolores but, Park, right? One of the things that I think this, you wanted to show is this is a mill you could bring with you. This is a mill that you, this is a milling machine which traditionally have weighed thousands of pounds that you can bring with you on a subway. And we went, we we actually put handles on it. I don't, Oh, I guess you have the yeah, we have, sub we have a subway in San Francisco. Okay, so let's go. Okay. So we, we have handles, so you can you can carry it with you, and you can take it over to a friend's house. And that's not a thing that you've really been able to do with a milling machine uh, in the past, um, which is super fun. Okay. Um, cool. And so you're you you were initially sort of pitching this on Kickstarter, as it says. What is it with the other mill? Create your own circuits. What yeah, we wanted to start so with you circuits. So custom circuits at your at your fingers. So she yeah. were kind of like, even though this is a general purpose milling machine, mm -hmm. you did actually something very smart, which is like, this is really good at circuits. Circuit boards. Yeah, it was and originally it designed things, for circuits. Circuit boards. So you you grab, and I'll just hold this up because it's it's not that big. So it takes these little blanks. And these are um, circuit blanks. Copper on one side, copper on both sides, yeah, phenolic so this is, in the middle. This, this is a single sided, so this is not fiberglass, it's paper phenolic. And um, most people don't actually see paper phenolic boards because the uh, FR4 is just very common. Yeah, FR4 is what everybody uses. It's more, it, it's it's like I think um, for like uh, industrial, it's just, it's more it's more solid, like FR4 is more solid. Yeah, FR4 is stiffer, it absorbs water, it absorbs moisture less, yeah. and it uh, has better flame re retardation. Yeah, so, but it's made out of fiberglass, which That's is really. That's the FR. It's the flame retardation. Flame retardation. Level okay. four. Level four. Um, and, but the problem is that it's fiberglass. Yeah. Which is kind which of... But you don't want to breathe. Which is not good That's for breathing. That's bad for you. Not like smoking. Yeah. Um, and here's a close-up... Without of, the enjoyable of smoking. Of, yeah. uh, you, of yeah, what you, it does here. Okay. So this is it cutting here. Right? Is that, is that a video from our... No, it's just so a still. still. Oh, it's just yeah, a yeah. still from your site, yeah. So this is... Uh, so it spins a little... End mill, a little blade, very, very fast. How fast would it spin this little blade? Uh, between uh, 10,000 RPM up to 12,000. Extremely, extremely fast little mill. And it's flat on the bottom. It's an end mill, not a drill bit. It looks so like a drill to, bit. It's meant to cut sideways. So yeah. a drill goes down like an end mill is meant to cut sideways. And okay. so you, it can also cut down, just not as fast as a drill can. And, it's not pointy. Yeah, and so the idea is that the machine comes down to the material and then starts cutting out a pattern in the material. That yeah. It's, so it goes just to the, the the depth of the copper, and and then you just brush it away when you're done, and you have mm -hmm. a circuit, and we'll do a live demo, so that will be exciting. Um, so okay, so it, it's it's basically designed for these. And how big of a circuit board can it cut? Uh, the biggest circuit board we can put in, I believe, is uh, five by four inches, okay. which is fairly large. Um, the milling time. That's pretty big. I don't even think I've designed anything that big. Yeah, it's big. pretty it's pretty large. Okay. Um, we wanted something that uh, would be big enough that you could build. Uh, you know, like a small robot or something, um, mm -hmm. and drive it around. And so this this gets to one of the things that I'm super excited about is you might ask why would you want a board mill? Why like would you can why? send it send it to a board house? You know, and you, you can pay a lot of money. You can have a board house send you stuff very quickly. Expediting um, a board it costs a you know basically you you can't get a board expedited with for less than two hundred dollars. It's yeah. very hard to. It's going it costs amount of money, um, but one of the more interesting things is if you ask a board house to make you custom strange shapes. Out of your boards, they're gonna like a. They're just gonna like give you the evil eye. They give you a stink eye. They don't like eye. to do they that. They don't like yeah. to do it. They want squares because then they can tile the squares all over the giant panels that they make uh, circuit boards out of, That's and then get really efficient. Yeah. Um, so if you want odd shapes, it's really hard mm -hmm. to talk a board house and to do it uh, in a in a efficient and cheap manner. Especially expedited. Especially expedited. And so if you're if you're doing like wearables and you want to make like custom shapes for bits and pieces of circuitry that go on clothing that you're designing. Um, or if you're building robots that are built up out of the circuit boards, uh, you need a different way. And one of the things that's wonderful about a board mill is, I, let's see if I can hold this up to the Oh, it's, it's not autofocus? It's not autofocus? Yeah, but it's a very small, adorable here, let's, Yeah, let me, let me switch to this one here. Hold it. Does that work? Yeah. This is a little lighthouse guy. So this is, a, this is designed by my partner. It's a, it's a little miniature lighthouse pendant, and the little surface mount LED goes up there at the top. Yeah, and it's actually what's interesting is um, you know when you have a circuit board mill, actually it's it's better to do surface mount components because you don't have to, you don't have drill, to drill through. through. Yeah. yeah, so actually, um, if if you're comfortable doing surface mount, a circuit board mill is excellent because um, it just cuts all around all the traces, and then you can just like I mean. I wouldn't. I don't think you could do um, like really fine pitch TQFM, it's, but like SOICs. Hard, yeah, it's hard to do fine pitch parts, but you can do um, like you know, Soix is really simple. 
Um, 0805s. Yeah, 0805s. Like SOT 23s and, and, and SOT 223s. Which gives you the freedom to prototype with a lot of uh, uh, components that you can't normally prototype with without having a lot of expensive uh, carrier boards or, or a very you know bulky project. Yeah. Um, but you can do through hole parts too. Yeah, you can do through hole. Okay. And, Oh, sorry, again. sorry. And for the through hole parts, because it's the end mill can drill down and it will cut the holes yeah. out for you. So, you what you would do is you would have the bottom. Usually, it's called the non. There's a component side, which is the top side, and then the copper side. So you'd put them whole, through, and then you just solder the bottom. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've done that with my um, with mm -hmm. prototyping stuff. Also. And the super fun part is if you take two boards and you put a little slotted construction that's the thickness of the board, you can build boards that uh, come together at the edge, and you can build boxes yeah. that are circuits or yeah. geometric shapes. And you can experiment really fast yeah. because it takes like how long does it take to mill out like a circuit like that? Like uh, well, that one minutes? only took about two or three minutes. Yeah. So fast. Um, so like even a large board, probably like half an hour. Yeah. The, the the thing that takes the most time is the the finer the the traces are, like mm. the gap distance. Yeah. But we're working on ways to make that quick. Okay. okay. Before we do a live demo, um, you know, I want to talk about the, some of the things about the company and the team. Um, you kind of have a rock star team. If you go to the the other machine co, it's just a collection of uh, a lot of prolific, super smart people. Um, I've known you for years. I think when I met you, you were at. Um, excited home writing, like content wow, flash. You, totally <laughs> brought up, you brought up the excited home. Just like home. twenty years ago, and then you were at Apple <laughs> oh for then you were at Apple computer for a really long time. It was fifteen years ago, but yes. <laughs> yeah, it was a million years ago. But like, you've had known for a long time. Yeah, and and uh, I met you on CompuServe. <laughs> And, uh, the BBS. and you have a whole group of people. So tell me about some of the people who work there and what they do. Okay, who are these people? Um, so that's a really old picture. And okay. I, this is the one from the website. <laughs> it's, there's, there's a bunch of, there's a bunch well, of people. Well, the website designer is one of the people yeah. who's not. <laughs> um, okay, well, who's, who's there now? <laughs> so our, our, our CEO is, is Danielle Applestone, and her, her background is uh, battery chemistry. Um, and we stole her away from uh, battery chemistry to help build robots for, for, for children. Yeah. Um, and our, our machine designer is Jonathan Ward, uh, who comes from the Center for Bits and Atoms. Um, our motion planning is done by Forrest Green, uh, who also comes from the Center, Center for Bits and Atoms. Um, Sarah Taipan does our uh, UI front end, um, which I, I would love to show off. It's very fancy and 3D. Yeah. Uh, Tom uh, Kashwa does the uh, board loading and infrastructure and back end um, for getting your board files loaded. Um, and there's a bunch of people here. I'm going to make sure I don't forget anybody. <laughs> oh, you're going to go back. you be like, well, yeah, Adafruit's up to 63 people, so when I go through the list. <laughs> no, I mean, like, you always have to say in advance, like, if I forgot yeah. someone, so sorry. But. So, so Sam, Sam, uh, Sam does our production management and uh, 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 has been working on getting our factory going. Um, with Denise, who uh, does um, our factory uh, management. Um, and then Alana is our machinist. Uh, she uh, cuts the parts out that make the machine. Um, and then Shelly does uh, assembly and is uh, coming up and doing CAD for the next part of the machine. Um, oh, I'm missing somebody. Oh, this is going to be so embarrassing. Uh, and then Martine does all of the community management um, and our, is currently our operations, does operations. Um, and uh, let's see, Ezra does our website. He's an amazing web developer. Um, yes, I did that photo. <laughs> Yeah, there's Look, been a lot of people added. You didn't list off a photographer <laughs> yet, so you've got to get someone to take a photo. Who did, who did the hardware design for the like control boards and stuff? Uh, and that's Alden Hart, who is synth uh, at See, Synthetos. So uh, Mari manages our store. Um, so altogether, how many people do you have? Uh, I'd have to count them all over again. Uh, what about? It was like yeah, it's 15, 12? Yeah, it's about 15, 15, you know, 14 to 15 people, okay. somewhere around there. Um, and uh, Simone Dalvis is, uh, which we uh, just stole away from BattleBots. Sorry, folks. Um, oh, I know Simone, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 so we, Simone is our, our product, project engineer. Oh, great. So she's going to be coming up with all crazy kinds of crazy ideas, which I'm super excited about. We're going to try and mill some uh, ice cubes, okay. uh, do ice milling, and uh, all kinds of weird stuff. It's going to be fun. Good times. Okay, okay so. well, I just wanted, yeah, I wanted to get an right. because there's apologize a lot. if I forgot Well, anything. there's a lot of people who, um, they're running companies, or they'll look mm -hmm. at Adafruit, or they'll look at, you know, they have a Kickstarter, and they want to know, like, what is the structure? Like, who, what type of people do you need to pull something off like this? So I think it's you need, helpful. Yeah, you need people that can are really comfortable wearing a lot of hats. Yeah. Like, I'm, 
In, in addition to being the CTO, uh, I also get to wear the hardware engineer hat and the manufacturing engineer hat and the tech support hat and the product design hat and the design hat. Who has yeah, the yelling at Chinese factories hat? <laughs> well, we, we don't have a Chinese factory. No, no, but like that makes the motors or the bearings or whatever. Uh, Danielle is Danielle is our uh, our bad cop, okay. and I'm the good cop. There always has to be someone. Yeah. You'd be surprised. Yeah, like you're like I ordered six foot long cables, and they're six inches <laughs> long. Or something. Yeah. I don't know. Anyway, no, it happened. Look, I mean, like the cables are motor yeah, made like in the, the U.S. You can buy them in the U.S. if you want. The to. hardest the hardest thing about running a company of this size is just is just the number of hats that you have to work and mm -hmm. the unbelievable amount of work that there is going mm -hmm. into it. And like that's the great thing about the team that we've selected is everybody is able to like do this all all of this hard work and still have fun. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, like it it should be fun. Do you guys argue yeah. over what music's on the stereo or no? Uh, no. Okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> is there a stereo? There's a stereo. Okay. Yeah. All right. So a couple of things could to get us out of the way. So this is what uh, this was for screenshots. That's ancient. Yeah, this is a screenshot. That's from it doesn't past. look that much different. I mean, it's it's, it's a three D oh. model. You yeah, can see it. Yeah. So this is a screenshot. From you can, there's the settings on the side. But here is. I the, know you're terrified, but to yeah. me, it's it. You can, you can hold can, it. Can up. I hold this up? You can hold it up to the screen here. Yeah, it's it's HD. Uh, so. I don't know if people can see that or not. Let me get the glare out. But yeah, it's, it's the interface is beautiful. Yeah. Oh. oh my god, so close, so close. Back up. Back oh up. god. Back it up. So but you can see the 3D model and then you can import since you're focusing on circuits, you said you can import three different kind of file formats right now. You can import We're starting we're starting with circuits. And we started with circuits because uh, A it's it's a it's a, it's one of the simpler uh, CAM pro problems to solve. Mm -hmm. CAM is computer aided manufacturing. Mm -hmm. So Normally, when you want to mill out uh, an Eagle file or some file, you have to use a uh, some processor which takes the Eagle file and mm -hmm. converts it into uh, G code, which is yeah. uh, the code that you use for programming CNC machines. But it's not the same as Gerber code. It's not the same as Gerber. Okay. No, it's it's called G code. Okay. Um, and it's it's from the distant past. It's ancient, and it's basically go here, go this amount, go that amount, go that amount. And so if you have like a three D printer, it's like it's like, um, like Lego logo, but like yeah, very precise. exactly. No, it's like <laughs> the, it's like the turtle logo, except you have a cutting head, like you, you know, cuts things. Okay. Um, and so we started with circuit boards because they're really easy. They're two dimensional. But that's we we don't want to just we don't want to to stop at circuit boards. We want to have a machine that can also support artists and can also support. Uh, people are building mechanical things, like you can build gears, you can build uh, stuff out of multiple materials, and kind of combine them together. Uh, and one of the first projects I made was this little circuit board that had a uh, was a combination of um, uh, a board cut out on a machine and a part printed on a MakerBot. Okay. Which, uh, oh, was that? Oh, sorry. There you go, Phil. Which one? That, that the orange right thing. Okay. Click on okay. that thing. Um, okay. So this is this is a, a tiny little AT Mega. Uh, I think it's a four of some sort. Tiny four. Uh, and it's just got 12 outputs, and it just goes in a loop around. But okay. it's a 3D printed. Yeah, it's a little, little spinner. Um, we have some earrings that I made out of circuit boards, which are kind of neat. Um, we've also made wax molds. Uh, this is the, the chocolate that Phil was showing off mm -hmm. earlier. Uh, so it's, it's a really versatile machine. This is like one machine yeah. that can work with all of these different this? materials. This is something I saw. This is, this is more circuit stuff that you guys did. That, yeah, that's, that's, that's a completed Fab ISP, so that's an in circuit programmer for, for AT Mega chips. It's, it's a USB teeny, but surface mount. Yep. Yeah. All right, well, let's try to do a live okay. demo, and then we'll start taking some questions. OK. So, um, okay, guess, so, okay, so but I was, was asking before, is what formats does it open up? Do you have to open up in Gerber formats or G-code? What formats can you import? So at the moment, we support uh, we support Gerber files. Gerber files. So you get either the top yes. layer, or the drill layer, or the outline. So you put your Gerbers, and it will automatically yeah, do all the it's tooling. Gerber. Gerber's a really old file format from from I think it's almost the early '70s. So, no, '60s or '70s. Yeah, like late '60s, early '70s, and so they didn't have a lot of the modern conveniences that we're used to in file formats. Like I don't know what units it was cut in. Yeah, that's always a um, joy. So it's. It, <laughs> Please be patient with us. We're working as fast as we can to support as many uh, as many of the variances of Gerber out there uh, uh, that we've run into. Um, but one of the th wonderful things about um, on the flip side is if you're uh, if you're a fan of Eagle, and I'm a fan of Eagle, and Lamar's a fan of Eagle. It's the best option of all the worst options. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I tell um, you. <laughs> is that we support Eagle board files directly. They have an open XML format, which allowed us to to 
load the files into uh, other plan. Eagle Cat, it sucks, but at least it wasn't ten thousand dollars. <laughs> um, <laughs> Sorry, I'm just working on my Eagle Cat models. Yeah, we sell Eagle Cat. We sell Eagle Cat. It's actually, and, you can get Eagle Cat Life for like seventy bucks. Yeah, it's it's cheap for BoardCAD, and uh, we support it directly. So okay, so you just import your BRD file. You just import it. Isn't the XML format great? It's lovely. Okay. I, you can, you it's, can kind of it's the them. best. We, 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 them. we met with them and uh, convinced they were going to do it probably anyways, but we talked to them about it, about how this could be a great thing for the maker world. And it was great for me. Yeah. Yeah. yeah thanks, guys. It's a, and I, I, you know, I did do diffs. It was with about five years Eagle ago. Um, four, three years ago. Four, four maybe. It was uh, time, three years ago. Time's flying by. We were in uh, Asia, so. Okay. Okay. Right. Anyways, I remember at the kitchen, we were talking to the German guy. <laughs> Yeah. They're all German. Okay, so you're going to do this. Okay, anyway, so just, it does EagleCAD. Okay, so great. So you designed something with EagleCAD while we were chatting. Yes. So during uh, show and tell, uh, I designed this um, little pogo pin board that you might make for uh, in circuit programming. Yes. It just has the little ISP uh, header yes. and then a Breakout. horizontal header. Okay. And so we're going we're gonna to cut it out. Um, and can't see the screen, unfortunately, but. Uh, but you're going to open up the board file in the other So I've, I've just opened up the board file in okay. the software. And the the great thing about this is I don't have to I don't have to configure much. I just have to tell it what bit is in the machine. Okay. So what what bit are you using? Um, I'm using a one thirty second of an inch flat end mill. And how small can the bits be? Uh, the smallest bit that we've managed to cut a board out with is a uh, ten mil end mill. Okay. So it's point uh, oh one inches. Point oh one. And then what pitch does that let you do? Like the, can you do a, a, um, like a large QFP with that? You can do a large, I think you can do a large QFP with that. Quick, don't, don't quote point, me. 0.01 uh, inches in millimeters is what? Oh, this oh. metric and imperial business. <laughs> I work in millimeters, so. Okay, anyways, whatever it is, that's the particular. So as long as you can cut between the pads. Yeah, okay. so it has to cut between the, tra the, the pads. I'll try to do the math in my head while it mills. Um, yeah, why don't we just kick it off while that's going. Okay, so you're mm -hmm. going to do 1 32nd, which is good enough for most basic work. Right. Okay. So it's not too loud. Yeah, I wouldn't want to hang out in a room with like 12 of them, which I do, but... <laughs> Whoa! Oh boy. Hey, live on the internet. <laughs> live demo, what happened? I don't know. All right. Did you have to, did you have to zero it? That was exciting. Now you can see the humming cycle. Oh, bit wasn't tightened. Guess who forgot to tighten the collet? <laughs> Don't forget to tighten the collet. This is more of an instructional video. <laughs> video. When you get Before your other mill, please don't do this. So yeah. you, it's like a Dremel. You have you have a collet and you have to tighten it. So yeah, there's a there's a tiny little bit. Um, let me switch over to the the other view there. This is the instructional information. Yeah, so yeah, so that's there's the this bit. tiny little bit. And uh, it goes into a collet. It goes into this collet, which uh, you have to tighten. Which you have to tighten, and if okay. you don't tighten it, tighten it. Kind yeah. of bad scene. Then it comes. It comes out. It comes out. Oops. Oh, whatever. It's cool. I mean, it's optional to tighten it, but now you just see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> so it actually just kept. It, it, would, it would actually just try to keep going, and it would. Yeah. Get it would the mill uh, the bit actually comes out and gets trapped because it's not being torqued enough. Okay, so now let's yeah, just do so it now again. I gotta, now I have to locate the tool again, so let me walk through that. Oh, this is cool. So you have to home it because it has to know how far Yeah, so unlike, it is. A, unlike a 3D printer, which uh, knows where the bed is after you've leveled it and adds material, um, you need to tell the machine where uh, the material is so that it can remove it. And you also need to tell it where the bit is. Oh, because whatever the height is, you have to tell it this is the top of the material because yep. it, it, that's zero yeah. and it goes negative instead of you tell it where zero is and it's positive. Yep. Okay. And so we have automatic tool locating, which is pretty cool. Okay, so it slows down, slows down, slows down, and then And then it, it tries to it. touch the tip of the tool to the bed of, uh, which is uh, it's an electrical connection, and that's how it knows where oh, the is. Oh, that's a good idea, yeah, because it's, it's an um, aluminum uh, base. Yeah. Okay, that's smart. Uh, and did, that you just, did you get that in that? It? No, it's... It's in a camp that that's, that's, that's a pretty common technique for leveling. <laughs> and now we're going to try again. Okay. And not cut the board. <laughs> Cut the board through. I'm gonna put the safety glass. On. <laughs> safety glass. Magnets. How do they work? Okay. Oh, that's way better. Okay. Uh, tighten your collets. Um, okay. So it's and as it's doing this, you can actually see on the software, it'll tell. It's showing you what it's cutting. 
Do you want to just yeah. grab yeah, the camera? Yeah, I'm just going to grab the camera. That's kind of a cool thing. So here, it's actually saying like this is where the mill bit is. So this is where, so did, this is the virtual world and the real world. Wow. What if I told you that that was a mill bit that was milling your circuit? You get up close. You get up close. Wow, that's too close. Yeah. That's dangerous. Okay. Don't do this at home. Don't do this at home. Um, you're a train engineer. Or not. So as, as it goes, you see it, a little bit of dust comes off. And that dust is the copper um, and the, uh, the little bit of the paper phenolic. Yes. Okay. So now you can see it's actually cutting out traces. So cut the outline. Yep. And it's going to cut the little traces out. Okay. It's a good time. And possibly it's going to crash. Awesome. But you were working on, this is, you are working on the software, the next version right here. So to be fair, um, this, well, this is, is the first this, one this ever. Isn't your, this, isn't your, this isn't the final shipping software. In fact, this is no, like no. The, the build that you did like a few minutes ago. Right? There, yes, there may be some last minute engineering going on here. That's cool. This is an actual engineering show. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so that's how it works. So, um, so the software runs on um, a Mac right now. So you have a, a Mac. Oh, that was a question yeah. that people had. Uh, why the Mac platform? Because that's your first, first shipping platform. Yes. Why is it sounds really strange with given all of the CAD programs and and PCB programs that are all available in the wonderful world of Windows? Why did why Mike? Why Mike SD? Did you choose Windows <laughs> um, uh, the Mac OS Not as Windows. your not Windows as your as your first platform. Um, this project is it because you're an Apple fanboy? A uh, little bit, little bit of history. So uh, <laughs> the other machine company originally came out of a DARPA project called Mentor, um, and this is not the first machine we designed. The first machine we designed was a cardboard cutter uh, that was uh, could do most of what a laser cutter could do for uh, one tenth the cost, and it was meant to go into schools. Uh, and give kids the experience of designing something uh, digitally and then uh, having it cut out and then... So it's kind of like a laser cutter, but yeah. with a knife instead of a laser. But less fire, less smoke, less burning, easier to get into a school. Yeah. Um, so it's a little teeny little exacto blade. Yeah. Like a little and, little. and at some point in time during this project, uh, I, you know, went to the project head and I was like, hey, you know, we need an interface for this. Like, can I get some help to make the interface for the machine? And uh, he looked at me and he was like, well, uh, we don't have anybody to help you out, so I guess that's you. Uh, and my experience Oh, good is, job volunteering there. Yeah, and so my experience uh, before uh, designing milling machines was doing software for a large Cupertino-based fruit company. Uh, I and love so fruit. Um, I wrote it in the language. Adafruit, <laughs> Adafruit Cupertino branch. I yes. don't know if you guys knew, but we have a factory out there. Um, yeah, you, you may have heard of them. Uh, so I used to work for them, and so I used the tools that I know, and that's okay. how we ended up where we are. Well, that's beautiful software. Uh, and uh, the great thing is, is that uh, this is people who have Macs really haven't had like CAD programs or machining programs uh, made for them. So now there's a whole bunch of you know there's a whole group of people that are going to have access to a milling machine. Like if you have Windows, there's already other milling machines that you can use. Uh, and the great thing is, is that the controller board for our machine is built on a platform called uh, TinyG uh, by a company called Synthetos. And it is, uh, it's, the firmware is entirely open source. Uh, you can go to um, github slash uh, synthetos or github slash uh, omco, omco, and you can download the source as it's being developed right now. It has bugs. Um, being developed, and uh, you can see how it works, and if you want to write your own front end for so it. So if you want to say, like, okay, yeah. I wanted to have an over-the-internet Linux-based or Raspberry yeah. Pi-based thing, you um, could actually and just pump G-code to it. Yep, yep. Okay. It takes vanilla G-code, no ops, no extras, and uh, uh, Synthetos has a Java-based front end for it that runs on Mac, Windows, and Linux. Uh, that you can you can stream G code to. Okay, great. So if you like, if you're you know G code, I mean anyone just can see it. Does, usually it's just like a G code yeah. text editor. <laughs> you just type in your G code and you press go. So basically you can use it. I like that. That's kind of cool that you guys decided to do kind of like an open API. Like you could have easily been like, haha, suckers. It's like a binary asshole format, but it's yeah, not. Yeah, I mean we we you know I we had to pick some things to uh, to own, and we decided to own the interface and our, our planner. 
Um, but you know, my heart is really in making the technology accessible, and so I'm super curious what people will do with our machine mm -hmm. after you know they get a hold I'll of it and start hacking. Pie. It. That'd be cool. Yeah, start hacking it, see what can happen. Raspberry Pi that makes raspberry uh, pies. Yeah. Okay, okay well, let's do a round okay. of questions for a bit, and then we're going to take a break. We have okay. a vi we have a video that we're going to show. Um, Colin's lab is coming back. Um, I don't know if you ever saw Colin's videos on mm -hmm. Make, but uh, uh, he's been working at Adafruit for a while, and we're bringing that back. So I'm going to take a break, and we're going to do that. But first, let's take a round of questions. So okay. all the folks have questions. Uh, I'm going to start with the ones that I can see going backwards. Um, how does it how does it avoid trying to mill through the bed? Does it just know where it is, or is there something more clever going on? Uh, it knows where the bed is. So when it locates the tool, it knows where the the tool stopped. And if you don't go past there, you don't cut into the bed. Okay. Um, you said that when you when the machine first starts up, like at the factory, mm -hmm. it mills its own bed, so its nose is completely flat because yeah, it's the, in so access of the un, bit. Unlike a 3D printer, uh, milling machines are pretty awesome in that they are made out of metal and plastic, and they are designed to cut metal and plastic. So they can cut themselves just fine, Yeah, um, <laughs> which happens sometimes. Uh, but yeah, the very first step when it leaves the factory is it mills the aluminum plate, which you rest all the material on, it mills it flat. So it always is, it knows exactly what zero is because yep. it milled it out itself. Yep. So if it's askew, it won't, doesn't matter because it corrects that when yeah. it and does the first start. We've tried to spend a lot of time really controlling for minute amounts of skew yeah. and things like that. That's okay. cool. Next up, if I wanted to mill something like the size of Flora, would, that, uh, would the difficulty be with milling such uh, fine tracks using other mill or the hand placing of such small SMD components? Flora is 0805s, mm. and the QFP is not 0.5. It's yeah. 0.65 millimeter. The QFP might be the hardest part. Yeah, so if you guys can figure out whether the QFP 0.65 millimeters is divided by 2 is less than 0 0.01 inches, which I can't do in my head, then it can do that. So the smaller the traces require more a little bit more experience and understanding how fast you go, and we've, we've done our best to like characterize uh, the different end mills that we sell and the speeds that they can go at. Um, but sometimes, you know, bits will break. And I think the floor is probably the high end of what that's, it can do. That's kind of the high end of what you can but do. But you could do like a Gemma, probably, which oh, yeah. is, which yeah, is yeah, much smaller, point. something around that side. It's hard to do double-sided because you'll have to solder the vias through. Yeah, that was the next question. Can you flip over the board and do two-sided boards? Absolutely. But so you we have, have to an, solder the vias through. There's a really neat. The there's a really neat trick for doing fast via soldering, and that is you take a piece of bare copper wire and you thread it through all the holes at yeah. once, and then you touch them all off with a little bit of solder and the, then trim them. Yeah, use yeah, 30, 30 wire, 30 gauge um, wire, uh, uh, like wire wrapping wire, which you have in the store. Is actually that's what the first time I used it was to do through hole soldering for like Modella mm -hmm. milling, and you just solder them in and you just cut them, and they they work quite well. Yeah, you can you even can even do it underneath a chip. And I did, um, I did SOICs with uh, Modella, so I should be able to do SOICs with this Okay, and then here, you want to look at this question. If Z-Home is the platen, uh, how do you determine, set the offset to the top of the board? Uh, there's a couple of ways to do it. One of them is that you can measure it with a pair of calipers. Uh, we also have a, um, a little pallet that can rest on top of the board, which is an end thickness. And so you can top reference or you can bottom reference, depending on which way you want to do it. Um, most of the work that you have to do in machining a thing is not actually the machining. Uh, it's setting up the job. It's just like locating things in space and figuring out where everything is precisely before you can cut it. Yeah. And we've, you know, we've tried to make it as simple as possible, but it is still a mill and it still machines things. Okay, so. good. <laughs> okay, a um, couple more questions and then we're going to play the video. Um, do you think you'll use Kickstarter crowdfunding for future other mill products? Uh, we might. It's a really great way to, to gauge uh, if anybody is interested in the thing that you're working on. Um, you know, the, the thing that really kept us going when the going got tough was knowing that there were 200 people that like really believed in the thing that we were, you know, this product that we were making. And like just, you know, trying to make them happy and like having that being our guiding beacon uh, yeah. really is what drives this project forward. Um, I think for our next project, we will probably try that again as well, too. Okay, cool. All right. All right. Well, we're going to take a little bit of a break. We're going to play a video. Um, and uh, actually, I'll just uh, set this up. So uh, Colin is uh, the brains behind our iOS apps, so Circuit Playground and Mose Resistance. I use it all the time. Um, have you played Mose Resistance yet? No, I haven't played Mose uh, Resistance. Oh, you've played Mose Resistance. What? And, I know uh, Resistance. And he's also well known for his series I'll fight of, you. of <laughs> videos. Um, I had hired Colin to make, and he did a series of videos like intro to what L LED is and uh, 
uh, what an oscilloscope is and all this stuff. So we finally had time. Um, we have the resources and Colin's uh, new video, How to Use a Multimeter, just debuted and it's already hitting the charts. Yeah. Uh, thousands of views in just you know, less than 24 hours. So uh, here is the world premiere for the folks who didn't see it on the site. Um, and they this can't, is the official <laughs> and they can't because their site's down right now. <laughs> um, here is uh, Colin and Multimeters. When repairing or troubleshooting a circuit, a multimeter is your best friend. How's it going, buddy? A multimeter is like a stethoscope for electronics. It takes abstract concepts such as voltage and current and makes them real by giving us the ability to measure them. This particular model is a manual range digital multimeter. Manual range meaning that I need to set the particular range of values I want to measure, and digital as it uses a digital display to show reading. Auto range meters, like this one, allow you to set the type of measurement you want to make without the need to specify a value range. Analog meters don't use an LCD. Instead, they use an old-fashioned mechanical needle to display their values. Like this one? Indeed, Lady Ada. Exactly like that rather large analog multimeter. When is that from? This one was made in the 1960s, but multimeters were first made in the 1820s. But not much has changed since then. There's still a large display up top, a mechanical dial to select modes, and two wire leads to connect to your circuit. So do people even use analog meters anymore? Absolutely. I really like analog multimeters because the moving dial makes it easier to see patterns in your circuit, easier than a digital multimeter. The simplest way to use a multimeter is for testing continuity, whether two points are electrically connected to one another. This is great for checking for solder bridges or cold solder joints within a circuit. Just make sure the circuit is unpowered before testing. First, turn the dial to the continuity setting. Then, connect the black lead to the common ground terminal and the red lead to the rightmost terminal. Then, connect the leads to each point in the circuit we want to test for continuity. If the multimeter detects connectivity between those two points, an audible beep will occur. If not, then no beeping shall occur. No beeping. Here's my lady to tip for using continuity mode in a multimeter. Especially in a loud office, you can't hear the beep. Cradle it against your ears, and that way, when you do continuity test, you'll hear it nice and loud. Nice. To measure the resistance between two points, set the dial to the lowest resistance setting, and then connect each test lead to each test point. If the multimeter simply displays the numeral one and a decimal point, that means we're trying to measure a resistance beyond the range of our current setting. Keep increasing this range setting until you see multiple digits appear. The dial is set to K ohms, or thousands of ohms, so we have a resistance of 9.88 thousand ohms. It's a lot of ohms. You may find yourself needing to measure the resistance of a very small component, like the surface mount resistor here, and these multimeter probes are way too big. In that case, we suggest smart tweezers. Smart tweezers are basically a small digital multimeter, except instead of wire probes, there's two pointy tips. Grab the component with the two tweezer tips, then you can read the value off of the LCD. Testing voltage is similar to testing resistance, but first we need to set the meter's dial to either a DC or AC voltage range. Here we're testing a battery, so we'll use DC ranges. Since I know this battery is supposed to provide 9 volts, I'll choose the smallest range that's larger than 9, which is 20 volts. Ah, it appears this 9 volt is not quite living up to its name, with a reading of around 4.3 volts. Sorry buddy, you don't have to go home, but you can't provide current here. Don't forget, if you want to measure voltage inside of a circuit, it has to be plugged in and powered. 
If I have to measure a lot of voltages in a circuit, I like to use a probe multimeter. After you connect the ground contact, you can probe any voltage you want and see the result on the LCD. Measuring current can be a little tricky because we need to route electricity through our multimeter and it can only handle up to a maximum of current before blowing one of its internal fuses. The terminal on the right can handle up to 200 milliamps and the terminal on the left can handle up to 10 amps, but it's not good at reading very small values. If you're unsure how much current you'll be measuring, but you know it's below 10 amps, connect to the 10 amp terminal and to the highest amperage setting. Then make a break in your circuit and connect the test leads across that break. It's showing 20 milliamps. That means I can safely switch to the 200 milliamp terminal and to a lower range. Now I can see that our LED is using about 15 milliamps of current. And my internal fuses are safe and sound. It's pretty common for people to blow the fuse on their multimeter when testing current, but luckily it's really easy to replace. Start by turning off the multimeter and removing the leads. Unscrew any screws in the back and open up the battery case. There might be some more screws you have to undo. Then turn it over and remove the body from the plastic casing. You'll be able to see the two replaceable fuses inside. Check which one's blown and go to your local hardware store for a replacement. Those are the essential things that you can measure with a multimeter. But many meters also offer the ability to measure capacitance, frequency, or even temperature. Still others have evolved to be quite small and portable. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm off to do a bit of testing. All right. Something. There was one question that uh, came up when more the video was, uh, yeah. can anyone think of an example where a manual ranging DMM is better than an auto ranging multimeter? Well, usually a manual range is a little less expensive. And um, if you kind of know what ranges you're using, um, a fixed range is much faster. And auto ranging multimeters, unless you get a really expensive one, it takes time for it to figure out what the range is. So it can be like three or four seconds until um, it comes up. Um, we actually have a full multimeter tour on the Learn system too, if you're interested in more detailed multimeter stuff, because this is only seven minutes long. But um, yeah, if you if you know that you're going to be sticking around a certain range, um, a, a fixed range multimeter or a, a range multimeter is much faster than an auto range. But an auto range is a lot easier for some people to use, so it's just a trade-off um, for many people. Okay. Um, okay. One uh, thing uh, we're going to do a little bit of top secret Ooh. tonight. Uh, everybody likes top secret. It's okay. not out yet. Don't ask. Uh, Lady Ada, what is this? This is a cute little um, MAME uh, emulator that runs on a Raspberry Pi that Phil B's working on, and he's using our Pi TFT and the little a joystick we have in the store to maybe make a little um, small uh, pocket portable po pocket MAME. Yeah, yeah but it's going to actually sh be shaped like an arcade cabinet. <laughs> <laughs> because yeah. that's more handy than like an iPhone device. It's like, you know, you want to actually have the mm -hmm. experience of having Yeah, you can't cabinet. tilt. Well, I guess you could, but. You could smack some that. Yeah. So um, we'll see how this uh, works out. And uh, it's kind of fun to play uh, Pac Man. So yeah, we got um, main running on the Pi TFT. It wasn't too bad. It takes up like all of the CPU, though. <laughs> Not very fast. You overclock the Raspberry Pi, though. Okay. okay. Well, with the last few remaining minutes, um, okay. we'll. Uh, let some folks ask some more questions. More questions um, from my guestie. Well, Mike, is there anything that you uh, would like folks to know about the other mill? That, about yourself? That, no, well, like Long a, com like a common beach. question that you can just then send a link to this video with a time code. Like, what's something you get asked <laughs> all the time? Um, the thing that gets asked all the time is, is this a 3D printer? Is it a, I already asked yeah. that. Yeah, but we already yes. asked that one. Like, that's the most common it is, question. It is, in a sense, a 3D printer, but it's a 3D anti-printer. So this is considered 
Um, so, like, like MakerBot Tech 3D printer is considered like um, that's additive manufacturing. That's an additive, yeah. and like it, it, it's, and then there's also the la the sintering type, which is the yep. laser sintering yep. type. Those um, are which, all additive processes. Which is additive processes, and then there's um, EDM and this, which are both. Yeah, so there's, discharge. there's laves, EDM machines, um, lasers, those are all subtractive. Could you put like an EDM head on here? I really hope somebody puts some strange heads on okay, this. Cool. Like, I'm really curious okay. about that. One of the questions that um, we saw that came up a lot, uh, a lot is what do you think the retail price is going to be? Uh, probably somewhere in the vicinity of, and someone's going to hate me for saying this. Um, $2,500. No, it's less than that. Okay. Oh, there you go. Under $2,500 <laughs> estimated. You. Yes. Estimated. Taxes not included. Sorry, Tennessee. <laughs> sales tax and et cetera. There's sales tax. California sales tax is pretty serious. Yeah, that is one. So are you having fun with this uh, this machine? Like, I am. I'm, I'm, the, the part that I'm super excited about is when other people start making things besides me. I've cut out a million of these tiny little, I'm, like... So I'm going to use it to make um, test jigs. That's actually why um, we twisted your arm and forced you to bring this machine to me. <laughs> Is um, so we're designing like two or three original boards a week for Adafruit and their breakouts, and so they're not terribly complicated. And I usually design the tester by just like soldering wires to the board and directly connecting to an Arduino and doing like a test program. Mm -hmm. But then I like to have like a pogo pin like presser right. thingy, and and we use um, like Arduinos and Arduino Arduino Megas, Arduino Unos, um, because like if the Arduino breaks, because like. Fry it somehow. I don't know how, yeah. but like once in a while, like if it They're frazzles, plentiful. Fields just get another of one. Yeah, yeah, it's we have like a bucket of them. Trust me, um, you know, or the or the shield's very easy, and it's just a very very fast way to do it. But, um, you know, the the thing is, I want to have the testers be replicatable. I want to be like if I get hit by a car, the fab team can make new testers or repair mm -hmm. testers. So I want to like, for example, an accelerometer only has a couple pins. I want to make a board that's basically a shield but routes those pins, those analog pins, mm -hmm. out from the accelerometer to the analog inputs of an Arduino, right, and has a little right. hole so it, it fits in, and then like an LED to indicate like it's working, and then a buzzer to indicate the test is good, right. and then maybe you know eventually have a slot for an LCD, so it's a little LCD output. Mm -hmm. So kind of design like um, really nice um, test jigs, and the the thing is once in a while I'll actually send a board out to make a test jig like for like NeoPixels. I needed a custom because it was just too complicated to do an mm -hmm. Arduino, like it was too big for an Arduino shield. But for the most part, um, you know, those just, it takes time. And it's, it's something where also, sometimes I'll design a tester and they'll realize, wow, I actually have to change the design because something in the field I'll notice, like, it's marginal. Um, I, or, you I know. I mean, I'm using this machine every day and I still am getting weirded out by the idea that I made a mistake on my board and I can fix it in an hour. Yeah, you're not like, you'll <laughs> get like, beaten to death by like, whoever is like. It's the, not like you know, a week for it to come person. back. Yeah. Or... Like, <laughs> It's, it's like fast and like especially right now like it's Chinese New Year like if you want to get PCBs from China like you gotta wait three weeks like you ain't get nothing out of there. Um, happy New Year. Happy horse year. Um, but uh, so uh, t test jigs, and then you know I want to be able to make them fast and also for some small breakouts or adapters, um, you know yeah I could prototype like you know a, the new a Pi T cobbler or something or like a, you know an Arduino shield or something. Yeah, we've built a lot of uh, custom carrier boards and weird yeah. Arduinos for yeah. testing or things Yeah, or like out. wearable stuff or or anything like that. Not something that's like finished, but just sort of like okay, I just need to figure out if I have this connector and I connect it this way, does it pretty much work? Or surface mount boards also. Um, you know, I get sometimes parts in and I don't have a surface mount adapter, and I'm like, okay, it's like an extra long SOIC or like, you know, a one millimeter pitch cable connector for like a resistant Or you get those screen. weird ones that have like the, the heat landing pads on them. And yeah, so I think this will be kind of fun for me to test with. I'll, I'll do a lot of testing, just milling out a lot of um, basically just Arduino shields for testers. And you know, they're great because they're solid and we'll save the files so that if you ever need to make a second tester, because like maybe we're testing two boards, it's like bam, make another one. Yeah. or if somehow the tester gets broken, which happened. I mean, you're like using it 5,000 times, eventually like pins break or like traces, you know, get accidentally cut or something. Just make another one. So that's I, what I'm using it for. I have this goal to cut out uh, all of the boards that I can on the Adafruit uh, GitHub. Uh, with yeah, the yeah. go for it. Yeah, that's I'm the goal. a little fine pitch, but uh, we're working on, on some fine pitch stuff. But uh, yeah, I think, this, I think it, for me, it's really, really useful, which is interesting because we also have a 3D printer. We have a MakerBot, uh, the Adafruit Edition. Uh, like the first one we got and we're actually using it um, in production and we're using it for like the most uh, boring thing that 3D printers were originally used for which is uh, beta testing injection molds. Yes. 
You know, because it's really fast. We'll be like, hey, we're designing like a new Raspberry Pi case or an Arduino case or like a BeagleBone case. We'll actually do like six or seven revisions of like mm -hmm. a press fit case and we'll be like, no, move to the left, okay. no, to the right. Last yeah. question and then we're going to do a trivia question. What is okay. the minimum line space for the copper cloud PCBs? Uh, the minimum one that we want to advertise is 10 mil trace in space. Okay. 10 mil, 10 mil. Oh, wow, that's pretty thin. Mm -hmm. So that, that is good enough to do um, a 0.65 uh, millimeter pitch. So you could do an at mega 32U4. So it's at mega 32U4 yep. and, and friends are uh, within that. I think even, you know, technically 0.5 millimeter maybe. Okay, it's now Tough time though. Tough. for a trivia question. Lady, what are the rules for a trivia question? This is the last one for Saturday night. Okay, uh, this is the last one. So um, we'll have more on Wednesday though. Uh, yeah. the, uh, if you've won something from the trivia question contest, you can't win again. Only one winner per lifetime, and that's my yeah. lifetime, um, <laughs> one, one, so don't answer. Uh, the winner uh, receives one of our multimeter if we're gonna give away a, what, a little one, or? Yeah, a pocket, a little, little pocket multimeter. Pocket so, multimeter. So you can be like Colin, wasn't that cool? He was just yeah. like, I'm gonna go test something. A little pocket multimeter that we have in the store, they're super, super cute, and auto ranging, yeah. and very handy. Uh, yeah, first here's person a, type in the answer. Here's a trivia question, the first person I see in the chat uh, wins. How many backers did the other mill have on Kickstarter? Total number of backers. You can't answer. Backer. Yeah. You can't answer. <laughs> if you're on the show or you're here at Adafruit right now, you yeah. cannot win. So it was lowering already. Sure. Yeah. Sorry. So that's that's the thing. Now um, there is a metric that I always thought about is usually if you can run a company or start a company that has two thousand customers, um, then you have actually have, you can start a company. And I think that this one is certainly one of those where there's there's about two thousand people that can get you going, right away. And I think the Kickstarter was um, a good indicator. Oh, let's see. The first person to get it was Coffee Electric One six hundred and fifty two. Congratulations, Coffee Electric six <laughs> Coffee Electric One. You got it. Uh, email support at adafruit.com and you will get a multimeter. Yeah, we can't give away the other mail because I need it to build these. Uh... Yeah. yeah, and okay. for all of our backers out there, like, thank you so much for uh, your patience and I'd like to uh, thank being the with Academy. us. Yes, I'd like to thank the Academy. <laughs> no, seriously, thank you guys. Uh, we're almost there. We're really close, uh, and we're excited to see what you're going to make with it. Okay, and I'm going to slide back in to end out the show. Um, hello. Uh, the code is other mill. We're going to let it go until Sunday because our site just happens to be down exactly during Ask an Engineer because that's the way it goes when you do site upgrades. Live demo, site upgrades, you name it. That's what happens. Um, so that's other how help, you know it's real engineering. Yeah, the other thing is... Um, Don't forget. We're moving the show. So, Wednesday. Yeah. Next, so in five days, you get another no, show and tell. Like four days. Four days. Four days. Uh, yeah. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Four days yeah. from now, you will get bonus, extra, because it's a short month, so we get yeah. we just toss an extra ask and your and show and tell starting at 7:30 yeah. p.m. Eastern time. Okay, I'll be here. All right, um, Bill will be here. The usual. My guess is going to San Francisco. Picture of the cat. Meow. And the MOSFET. And we'll see everybody next week. Thank you for a fantastic four years of Saturdays. We'll see you on Wednesday. Here is your moment of Zener. <laughs>